this is my current hurricane backup power system. I have this plugged into the wall, 120 volts coming in. It goes through, comes out here. And at the same time, this RV inverter charger unit keeps these batteries charged. Right now they're floating at 13.6 volts. Now, if this power should ever fail, the inverter turns on and powers this guy using the power from the batteries. There's two of these 6 volt golf cart batteries and they're wired in series so it's a 12 volt system. And it's a 20 amp inverter and it will power things like a microwave, a toaster oven, a refrigerator and really the amount of time it powers them is based on the current usage and the capacity of these batteries. But it won't power a 240 volt well pump. So these 6 volt golf cart batteries are rated at a uh, 75 amp draw to last for 107 minutes when they're new. And all I have to do is every few months come in and top up these guys with a little bit more distilled water. Because it's in a stationary setting and I'm not drawing power out of them very frequently, it really doesn't need to be topped up too frequently because it's not charged very frequently. The benefits of using golf cart batteries is that you can buy them anywhere, they're relatively inexpensive, and they require not very much maintenance. You just put a little bit of distilled water in every couple of months as they get down lower. They also don't require a battery management system because all you have to do is charge them a little bit higher than usual and they will top themselves up and kind of top balance on their own. Now the downside of lead acid golf cart batteries is when you're charging them, especially if you're topping them up, they might emit a little bit of hydrogen gas, which is flammable. Um, you do have to open these guys up and put in new uh, distilled water every couple of months. They're very heavy um, and they have a limited number of cycles, maybe 500 cycles total. If you're in a stationary application, the heaviness doesn't matter too much. And if you're just using them for backup power in the case of power outages, you're really not going to be cycling them very frequently. Now, if you're using a lead acid system, I really like keeping it at 12 volts. That's because all of these accessories are 12 volt accessories. You can buy inexpensive 12 volt battery chargers. You can buy inexpensive 12 volt inverters. The big downside is the number of amps you need to draw. Um, if you're trying to do a 240 volt inverter that's doing 2,500 watts. 208 amps. Um, out of a 12 volt system. So this wire here, although it's big, isn't big enough. You need to use a, a much bigger wire for that. Also, these batteries are rated at 75 amps. They can certainly produce 200 amps continuously for a while, but you're kind of hitting the batteries a little bit hard there. So it'd be nice to go up to a 24 volt system, which reduces the size of the wires you need by half. Um, but with lead acid batteries, the 12 volt system is the standard. Another nice feature of the 12 volt system is that when these run down in a hurricane, you can start your car up, put jumper cables from your car battery to these batteries, and just charge it using your car's alternator. All right, so for the battery systems, your pretty much minimal cost system is two flooded six volt golf cart batteries in series. They're rated at 220 amp hours, but you can only discharge lead acid batteries to about 50%. So that's a usable amp hour of about 110 and your system voltage is 12 volts because you have two six volt batteries in series. Now the cost here is your lowest. It's about 250 to $300. And um, your watt hour capacity is 1.3 kilowatt hours, which is reasonable for running a well pump very intermittent. Um, now, if you are worried about generating hydrogen gas when you're charging the batteries or having to remember to do the maintenance of adding distilled water, um, you want to go with AGM batteries instead. And they come in 12 volt batteries, so you'll want to buy two of those um, to get a usable amp hour capacity of 100 by putting them in parallel. Um, so your total capacity is a little bit lower and your total cost is going up to about $400. But you don't have to do any real maintenance for them. Now, I've pretty much decided that I need to go to a, 12, a 24 volt system. And so if you're using golf cart batteries, the only way to get 24 volts is to put four of them in series. And so that gives you twice the capacity. You get uh, 2.6 kilowatt hours of capacity, which is good. Um, it doubles your costs, of course. You're going to $500, $600. Um, the big advantage to going to a 24 volt system is that you can use smaller cables and you're not hitting the batteries as hard. Instead of drawing 200 amp hours, at 12 volts, you can draw 100 amp hours uh, or 100 amps at 24 volts. Um, also, uh, many of the inverters that are going to be able to run a well pump will require just a 24 volt input to work well.
Now, if you're worried about hydrogen gas and having to do maintenance, it's going to cost you a couple hundred extra dollars if you want to get four of these AGM batteries to come up to a 24 volt system. I, I certainly don't recommend doing just two of the 12 volt AGM batteries um, because in series they would only have a 50 amp hour capacity and um, you really probably don't want to be drawing 100 amps out of those for too long. You'd really be hitting them too hard. Now, if you are following along and trying to replicate my system, I actually recommend the four flooded six volt golf cart batteries. That's not what I'm gonna use, but that's what I recommend for most people. The reason is they don't require a battery management system. Um, they're relatively inexpensive. You can buy golf cart batteries just about anywhere um, and they're easily understood. And many of the very inexpensive charger inverters you're going to be using with a low budget system like this are really only geared for charging lead acid batteries and they just won't work with any other style of battery. Now, I've actually had a lot of experience with Nissan Leaf modules, and the prices on those on eBay have been coming down. I bought six of them for about 430 bucks. I listed the price here at $500 because I'm going to have to build an enclosure, put some bus bars on top to put them in series parallel, um, and basically to make my 24 volt system. So the real advantage of lithium over the golf cart batteries because the price here is about the same. Um, the real advantage is longevity. And so if you're going to be using this for a backup power system and you're going to be hitting it every single day, the lithium wins over lead acid hands down. Now in this situation where it's you know, power failure, you know, maybe you have two or three of those a year, um, it really doesn't matter if you're using lithium or lead acid because the lead acid have 500 cycles and if you're only cycling three or four times a year, it's really the longevity of the battery that's going to get you more than the cycle count. Um, so the reason I'm going with Nissan Leaf modules is because they're a lot lighter weight and smaller um, and I'm planning on using them in other situations when I'm not preparing for a hurricane or worried about a power outage. So I'm personally going to be using this battery bank I'm building probably in a boat um, and then if a hurricane approaches I move it into the house and get ready to run my well pump. But the fact that I'm not using a lead acid battery is going to complicate a lot of other things having to do with charging and battery management systems.